Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Friday Nightmares Podcast. This is episode 94, and with you, as always, is Mr. Smoke Show Crawford, coming to you from the town of Sports Creek in the county of Genesee, in the state of Michigan, in the United States of America, in the North American continent, in the Western Hemisphere, on the planet Earth, in the Milky Way galaxy, I'm fully vax, boost, waxed, and ready to climax. And if you can, please get me wet and feed me after midnight. I'm the man with the glorious beard, a.k.a. Mother of Cats, a.k.a. the man with the humongous <coughs> ego, a.k.a. Skyhausen, a.k.a. Skyhousen, a.k.a. Spanky. And with me, as always, is... The other premium podcaster from this very professional number one podcast. Heather Powell. Oh, I need to add that to my intro. <laughs> Heather Powell, uh, coming to you today from Waterdown, Ontario, Canada, who's slowly getting over another cold because my life sucks. Um, you know, maybe it's just karma because of all the mean things I say to people like Matt Wood and Tim Davis and, I don't know, Lance and, sometimes and I pick on too. And rubbing it in that you have free health care. And rubbing it in that I have free health care. that I didn't even go to the doctor for, but I could if I wanted to. Um, so, you know, maybe that's just karma coming around to get me, it, which is fair. I'm a kind of an asshole. Like, I sent Scott a message a couple of weeks ago. I've been watching a lot of true crime stuff. And I'm like, you know, if I got murdered, no one would really be surprised, I feel like. Like, someone would be like, well, she finally <laughs> ran, ran her mouth one too many times. And that's what happens. But it's, as Scott knows, what I, and who I present on this podcast is a very exaggerated version of myself. In person, I'm much nicer. <laughs> is it, though? Is it? I think it is. Don't you think so? Don't you think I'm nicer in person? <laughs> I, yeah. I don't know. Okay, it's going to be like, I think I am. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm just a just a see you next Tuesday all around, and this is how I find out, right? <laughs> nope, I just gotta fuck with you. <laughs> well, it's fair, right? I, the amount that I harass you. Did Erica listen to our last episode where I talked about you being a stripper and her being at the top of the pole? I don't think she has. Uh, not yet. She's too busy. That's why. She's well. Yeah, I was saying yeah, now, like she's doing audio books like I am. So, like, I think that's where most of her time is spent. Oh, well, do you guys have, like, a little book club going on? Kind of, yeah. She's reading her own books, and I'm reading mine, and they're themed, but she's... I don't know what's going on with our internet, but I didn't hear a word you said, Scotty. Oh, boy. I've been saying, like, there seems to be a delay going on. Can you Is know? there? Yeah. You know what we'll do? We'll shut off our cameras for a second and see if that makes a difference. So we don't All have right. to see each other. We'll go in dry. Oh, yeah. We'll see how it goes. Right, okay. Well, that's a little better, right? I like it. Oh, you're still like, well, this is what happens on a premium podcast when you have so many people downloading your episode. That's that's why, like <laughs> Scott and I, this is not how the Internet works, but our our Internet is just so shoddy because when you're premium podcasters like ourselves and everyone downloads your episodes, this is what happens. So try saying something again. Ex Talk about your book club. Oh, you know, we get naked and we just like <laughs> sit there talking about <laughs> You probably you heard do. That, huh? That's, yeah, I heard that part. Sounds great. Sounds like a really good relationship <laughs> building. All right, I'm going to try turning my camera back on and see if it makes any difference. Um, at least you can see me. Yeah, let's try this again. Yeah, I can see you. Okay. Ah, you know what? Are the boys on the internet right now? It could be. You know what? It's tell them to stop downloading porn. That's clearly what the problem is here. I mean, I do have the power. I can just go in here and turn the internet off for specific devices. <laughs> oh, well, maybe you have to imagine you do that. You're like... Boys, I am a professional podcaster for this premium podcast that gets 500 downloads a month. I need to make sure Heather and I can record our episode. We may not record again until I'm back from my trip. This may be yeah. it, everybody. So if you don't hear from us in a little bit, Scott and I did not break up. Um, Scott isn't too busy no, and, starting a new book podcast with Kate or something. He's We're just not recording and, because I'm away. And I'm not being lazy and not releasing the episode, which, I mean, you know, yeah, that probably could be part of it, too, but still. I know. You'll release it later this month, and you'll be like, oh, well, I had to, Heather. You're away. Like, I couldn't, like, right? release just, it too early. Exactly. I don't want, like, the fans waiting. The fans. Like, Matt Wood. <laughs> Matt Wood and Tim Davis are the only two exactly. people waiting. And Rob Humphreys. The people we insult the most and are Dave, the ones that are download Dave, it right away. That's like, and Dave Bailey. Oh, yes, and Dave Bailey. That's true. Are you eating too right now? I thought you had your lunch already. I did. This is uh, this, uh fruit. Oh, it's your dessert. Yeah. I'm, it's being, very all, I'm being all healthy. Yeah, very boring, healthy adult dessert. Before we get into these awesome 2024s with our 
spoiler review of Imaginary, so buckle up, everybody. Scott and I have a new number one for 2024. He's going to win all our awards. It was so good. Just like Rob, just like Rob Humphrey's number one is Lisa Frankenstein. Exactly. Just like that. It was also <laughs> so good. I think you need to let everyone know what Connor had to say to you about Skinamarink. I think um, that's a valid thing to share here. Uh, what the hell did he say now? He liked it. First of all, he liked yeah, he it. Said he, he just acknowledged that he liked yeah, he, it. Yeah, he said he liked it and thought I was crazy for hating it. And he's like, but that's the point of this movie. Because I was telling him, like, it's so boring and nothing happens. Like, literally, just it's like someone dropped their camera and said, oh, there's a scene. And he's like, but it's supposed to be through the eyes of kids. I'm like, I know that. But it, it, it doesn't need to sit there. No kid sits still that long. You're like, look, but, you little Gen Alpha. You don't know shit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, he's Gen Z. Gen Z. Gen Z. <laughs> okay. Yep. Ah, he's on so the like, border though. Just, yeah, I was like, you're he's a Gen Z. You're, you're you're the late stage Gen Z. <laughs> right. Hey, and you know what? If that's who that movie was made for, fucking all the power. I'm glad he enjoyed it. I'm glad he was able to find something from it. You know, just because it wasn't for us, um, doesn't mean that it can't be for. And maybe it just connects better with the younger gen. You exactly. Know? Like. As I said to you, I'm I'm glad he found that interesting. You know, again, I, I really have a hard time believing it's a number one film. Like, I guess personal taste aside, I, it's just compared to what else came out last year. You yeah. know, I just have a hard time how you could really honestly consider that film a number one film compared to other ones. But, hey, everyone's different. Not everyone's right, like Scott and I at our exactly. premium I mean, Friday Nightmare podcast. I was going to say, we're premium, so of course we're right. We're always right. It was always us. It's always been us. Um, it's always been a, us. A very special shout out to uh, Dummies of Horror, who has done the whole decade versus decade. And fuck, that's mm. a grind. Fuck, that's a grind. Yeah, I don't like. Uh, uh, Erica was still working with me at the time when they first started talking about doing this, and she's going, "They are going to burn themselves out doing this." I'm going, "Yeah, they probably won't." But they will be tired afterwards, for sure. And yeah, so that, that is a lot that they did. But kudos to him. They did great. It, it's hard. As Scott and I talked about before, we used to be serious professional podcasters like them as well. Um, and we used to do themes and shit. But so I know the work, you know, and I don't think and yeah. and up to this point, Scott, like I feel like before I did podcasting, I was just a listener. I didn't understand how much prep can go into a really well thought out podcast. It is exactly. it is uh it is a labor of love. Um and it really is. I like I applaud them. And I really was like, I just don't want the eight nineteen eighties to win. Because I just feel like that's so stereotypical. I really hope that's not the decade that wins. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, um uh, I'm thinking maybe the twenty ten to twenty twenties could. That's what yeah. I'm hoping for. Rob yeah. Rob is screaming at us right now. You're wrong. <laughs> Rob thinks I'm wrong about everything. It's just Rob's way of flirting with me. Um, it is. And me. You know, and well, that's fuck. That's true too, right? <laughs> um, so I, it will be very interesting to see. But I liked their hot takes on things like not liking Carnival of Souls. Yes. I enjoyed that because I think sometimes, and again, we all have preferences, but sometimes people praise these older movies. And yes, when they came out, I, I respect movies for what they did for the time. You know, there's a lot of movies that if we hadn't had them, we wouldn't have what we have now. But uh, I have a good friend in the UK that gets very frustrated oh, by boy. me because he's a he's a very much a more mature movie fan, we'll say. He likes a lot of the older stuff. He's listening right now and probably laughing because he knows I'm talking about him. And... <laughs> I correct him all the time. He probably, and he's so polite that he will never say anything rude back to me. But I think it's important to acknowledge that, you know, things get better as time goes on. To say that cinematography has not improved is not true, you know, right. but that's not to say that certain movies still don't have their place in cinematic history and deserve the respect that they do. But when you show it to a newer generation, they may not like it. Just like you and I did not appreciate Sim Skinner Rink, but Connor did. It's not exactly. that Connor's stupid and his opinion doesn't matter. Absolutely not the case at all. Well, to me, it's... his opinion doesn't matter. <laughs> well, Connor, your opinion matters to me. Love you, because Connor. Because <laughs> I know you don't know me, but I'm like your cool aunt. Scott's like <laughs> a boring dad. So it's it's fair, right? They're like, word, lady, word. 
Um, but you know what I mean, Scott? So we all need that kind of give and take, but I'm glad that they've gone through the errors. But the thing that makes me laugh the most is when they would make for the 1930s, 40s and fifties with the, Oh yeah. Now nah, what do you say here? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's exactly how they all sound. Well, I think you're a fool. Well, I think you're a fool. Oh my goodness. Well, you get the heck out of here. Yeah, like, they're all... <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, buddy. Anyway, if you're not currently listening to Dummies of Horror, please check them out. Um, you can find them on Spotify or any other uh, podcast carrier, or you can become a Patreon like Scott and I. I'm also a Patreon of The Horror Returns. I actually have to give them my top three or three picks. I'm trying to think of what I can torture Lance with, but I don't want to hurt Brian and, and um, my God, Phil. Sorry, Phil. Yeah. Like totally blinked on your name. I'll blame it on my sinuses. But yeah, like I want to torture Lance, but I don't want Brian <laughs> and Phil to be sacrificed in the process. So that's a hard call. How do you torture one person? It would be like, it, you know, wanting to do stuff to Matt, but sparing <laughs> Kate, right? Well, that's what easy to do with Matt. You just suggest any movie and he'll throw a fit or hate it. You know, and he came at me. <laughs> I, I saw you come at me punching Matt, talking like, oh, look at my letterbox. You look at my fucking letterbox, Matt, before you come stepping. Huh? Mr. Oh, I watch everything. Fucking bring it, Matt. Is yeah, that, look, can you imagine? Matt and I just have an episode with us going back and forth on what movies we've seen. <laughs> well, sorry, because I think, I think you're in like a, I don't think you know it, but you're in a competition with him now, because I think he was like trying to outdo you last year, and then. Oh, I know. You were I know cocky. he was. I was, I was happy that he beat me. I loved listening to their year-end show, and he's like, I watched more movies than Heather. I, I think that's great if i've inspired somebody to watch more than 12 fucking releases in a year and then tell me the year sucked right like at least if you've watched enough and you tell me the year sucked for you then i can be like well yeah you watched enough movies i love when matt competes with me because so the, the more i make fun of somebody the more i like them exactly so like matt like i basically adore you i basically have a wall attributed to you i consider you like my version of calvin harris like a you low just, budget version of Calvin Harris. You just DC, have a right? wall. You just have a wall. I have a shrine to my <laughs> wood. It's I have a, a, a big piece of wood. <laughs> I have a Woody for Matt Wood. Oh, you're like my dildo is named after Matt Wood. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, that's a virgin, so he wouldn't know anything about no, that. No, he wouldn't. He's saving himself. You know, that's good. <laughs> some people still have morals out there. So our uh, our 2024 list continues to be entertaining. Um, does it? Oh, it sure does. At least to talk about. So I uh, last episode we talked how excited we were for Imaginary. Mm, plot twist on that one coming up soon. But yeah. we uh, we also talked about this one. Uh, dropped on Tubi was uh, sadly made in Canada near Niagara Falls. Um, it was sadly made at all. It's a shame that this was made in created but at least it's on tubi it is Romy, uh forced to hide out at a state-of-the-art smart house a young woman on the run is terrorized by Romy, which sounds like a funny name for a vacuum but anyway right it's it's sinister digital assistant um hmm. so uh this movie is about a young lady who is involved in a crime and she's uh forced to hide out from her rich senator mom at a smart house but yeah. things are not what they seem because because mom wants to make sure that her name is not smeared. It's a uh, Scott loves asshole politicians. So mm. this, this, you know, what you see in, and the house has some secrets. Wink, wink, nudge, Ooh. nudge. <laughs> Um, this obviously didn't have the same kind of budget that we'll say Margot did a couple of years ago. Um, this didn't even have the budget that the movie Tim did from earlier yeah. this year. This had a lower budget. I, I didn't hate it. I didn't mind the, the main girl, Alex Barja or the dudes that were in it. I thought they were all fine. I think it was more of the script writing and the very particular, like very much a paint by numbers plot that kind of lost me. And it was sitting at a, What's the runtime here? An 85-minute runtime. What were your thoughts, Scotty? Uh, for one, like you said, Tim and Margo were definitely much better. Uh, this just felt very lifetimey, And yep. also, I could care less what happened to this main girl. Like, because of the 
thing that she did that, you know, is the reason why she's being locked up in this house to hide away. Like, I felt no sympathy for her because what you did was a bad thing. Go. It would be like if, if Matt Wood got locked away for his harassment of me. Right. You would understand it. You know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. It's forced to watch Shudder because he's watched everything on Shudder. Well, Matt, guess what? <laughs> We're going to make you watch this too. Well, I mean, I mean, to be fair, he probably has watched everything on Shudder because, you know, in the UK, they probably released one movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's like, he's like, I've watched everything on UK Shudder. There's 20 films. <laughs> wow. Ooh, Matt's like, I mean, I'm so I mad. Mean, I'm going to go to the pub right now and have 10 beers. <laughs> I mean, he's probably sitting there going, yeah, it's bullshit. It's true. <laughs> yeah. He's like, blind me. Bloody hell, Heather. <laughs> it's like... He's but, like, I'm yeah. gutted, Heather. I'm simply gutted with your comments. <laughs> and, and, wow, Matt Wood's on the podcast. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, Matt Wood. He's so fluffy. That's a fluffy but, uh, but Yeah, this movie was just very okay. Um, Because of this one and Tim, and I have a feeling it's going to be an ongoing theme this year, is uh, I created a new new award for our end of the year show. And it's oh, called, you did? Uh, AI is scary. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm an, on an AI working committee at work, and I find that really funny because there's people on that committee that think AI is scary, too. Uh-huh. So <laughs> I should bring this film in for show and tell me. All right, we're all going to watch Romy. Anyway, this is a Tubi film. I don't know. Unless you're really into AI, Tim Walker gave it three stars. Sander Kane wants to watch it. Mm, Sander. No, you don't. Yeah. No. You can skip no, it, buddy. No, Sander. Yeah, I gave it a whole whopping two. <laughs> yeah, like, get out. Get out. <laughs> and not the good get out. Right? But if you are interested, uh, this is called Romy, and it is available on the Tubi. I'm going to let you introduce the next one, Scott. This was oh. also a, a very interesting one. Yeah, yeah, it was. All right, so the next movie is stop motion uh with a 93 93 minute runtime uh the synopsis is ella blake a stop motion animator struggling to control her demons after the loss of her overbearing mother embarks upon the creation of a film that becomes the battleground for her sanity as ella's mind starts to fracture the characters in her project take on a life of their own yeah this is uh weird um i seen where it was going like it it there the twist in this was it, very just obvious uh however like the one thing i will say about this is this film was beautifully shot the mm-hmm. stop motion was amazing because you don't see stop very motion good. nowadays yep. um the acting was really good even the score was good the script writing was good the only thing that i just couldn't get behind this movie is the story like i just felt it was just blah it was psychological horror and just really didn't do anything for me so this is an IFC film. Enough said. Yeah. Like, I have got to the point because, well, I've watched so many movies. Here we go. <laughs> um, Since I started podcasting, probably more than Matt would. But um, I'm like that, you know. I'm just a really well-rounded, <laughs> humble. Premium humble podcast. podcast. A premium podcaster. But the moment I saw IFC, I was like, fuck my life. I know what this is going to be. It's either going to be really good or it's going to be really fucking weird. And it was an in-between. Um, yeah. I agree with you. The stop motion in this was fucking excellent. Like, chef's kiss. The acting was very good. I thought the main character was fabulous. The story dragged for me. I felt like this was, again, an idea for a short that got dragged out to a 93-minute runtime. Yeah. Um, I, I, we have some, some reviews for some other premium podcasters, um, such as Tim Davis. Um... He talks about that this is a well-done piece of cinema with really great effects, unreal acting, and fantastic score. There's a lot of symbolism and cryptic imagery that went over my head. I'm not the smartest tool in the shed. That's not true, Tim. You're very smart. You're just more practical. You're mm-hmm. very practical. And sometimes you're in this, like, super – even me, Tim. I'm I'm into all this, like, double entrana meanings and, like, ooh, look for the deep meanings. And even for me, I can be like, get the fuck out of here. Like, enough already, right? Um, Matt Wood said that this is pretty good because it's the only film I've ever watched. Heather watches <laughs> I'm just kidding you say that. This is pretty good. A dark story about a girl who makes stop motion. Yep. 
the stop motion is really well, acting is decent. I like the story, but there was something missing for me. And I think that that's kind of what you described well too. Like the third act is incredibly dramatic and violent. Um, yeah. And very, very well done. It's it's an IFC film. I don't know. It's a fucking IFC film. If you like IFC films and <clears throat> you, you're into them and you like stop motion, this may be on your top 10 this year. Yeah, I'm Bottom say, line. I could see, I could see right? certain people really loving this. But yeah, it just all depends. It, it like it's not a bad film. It's definitely, you know, if I was to rank it on terms of quality of filmmaking, this is a solid eight or nine out of ten. Yeah, it is a good fucking movie for my own personal enjoyment. Probably sitting at a six. But yeah. at the end of the year, if this comes up on somebody's top ten, I'd be like, totally makes sense. Yep. Totally makes sense. Exactly. Like, high quality, well made film. It is available at all the rental places. Apple, Google, Voodoo, Spectrum, Amazon, um, you name it, it's there. So feel free to go and rent it. I think it's worth whatever rental cost you pay. You're not going to be disappointed. Um, if anything, just the stop motion alone and the creepiness of that will do it for you. Right. Um, but uh, I would say definitely a highlight of 2024, just not necessarily something that was a highlight for me. Exactly. That's pretty much how I feel about it. And the next one is all you. Okay, so this is really exciting for a couple of reasons. <laughs> one, Scott brought it up on the last episode. The Butchers from 2021 has a has a sequel called The Butcher's Book to Raghorn, which I was like, fuck yeah, I'm down for this. This sits at an 88-minute runtime, which is good because it doesn't need to be longer than that. Right. The hunt continues. Book one followed a family of statistic butchers living in the backcountry who sees anyone cross their path as dead meat. In Butcher's Book to Raghorn, the story continues when an accident leaves the captors in the hands of the brutal cannibals who plan to hack them up for meat. We are talking a basic bitch storyline here, okay? There is nothing fancy about this movie. Butchers, cannibals live in woods. People's car breaks down. Drama with people. Torture. Fight for life. Great practical effects. Low budget. Now, the cool thing about this fucking movie was... So last summer, I a lot of movies are filmed up here. We've all talked about how Thanksgiving was completely filmed near my house and mm -hmm. at the high school near me and all that other shit. So many, many movies are filmed up in this area. So I was taking my dog on a walk through a place I call Christie Lake. Well, that's what it's called. It's called Christie Lake. And I came across a horror movie set. Knew it was a horror movie set because there's like fake blood. And it was like, you know, obviously they were setting up for a shot. So, like, creepily me, like, didn't know where else to go, so I walked through it. There was no actors there at the time. There was just a couple of set people, and, of course, I did the whole, oh, sorry, my bad, oh, my bad, so I could be, like, creepy, <laughs> right? So, anyway, fast forward, I watched this movie, and I'm like, holy fuck, that's the set I walked through. So, that is awesome. Yes. So, that was cool to see how different they make it look on the camera like they made these woods look very different i see why they chose it as a filming it was a perfect location for it um and you know it was cool that way this is a low budget fucking slashy slashy stabby stabby edy edy grossy grossy if you like that shit you'll like this movie tim um, davis i think you'll like this for what it is how about me who was not a fan of the first one you won't probably like it oh boy okay <laughs> Well, I would still watch it. Yeah, I'll say I probably will. Probably what I can just easily throw on at work at one point. Well, you've been to where this was filmed. I've taken you right. there. That, that's, that, that is also, yeah, that's another reason I should watch it, actually, just right. for that. Right, so I, um, I don't know. I thought it was entertaining enough. Like, again, I, I, there's less plot in this one than the first one and a lot more gore and a lot more practical effects. Okay. So if you're if you're looking for just straight out like torture and like simplistic plot line, um then this is a great film. Like if that's what you go in with your expectations. Um David Garrett's given it four stars and David and I have a love-hate relationship with how he feels about movies. Um <laughs> Yeah, like if this sounds like your thing, uh, Google Play, Apple TV, Microsoft Store, Amazon, YouTube, all that stuff. Like, it's worth whatever rental you get. Low budget slasher with some cannibalism in it. If you're like someone who hated the new wrong turn and just wanted to go back to the good old days of fucked up cannibals in the woods, this movie's for you. All right. Yeah, I'll definitely have to check that out. Then. Just, to, just to see. Maybe I'll like this one more, especially because of my, like, uh, being A little there. bit of a connection. Yeah, exactly. Worth a shot. 
Uh, so yeah, I'll jump on the next one because I know we both watched it. Um, the next one is called Night Shift uh, with an 82-minute runtime. Uh, fear never sleeps. A young woman working her first night shift at a remote motel begins to suspect that she is being followed by a dangerous character from her past. As the night progresses and increasingly supernatural events occur, she quickly finds out that nothing is what it appears to be. Uh, this movie mm. is... Mm. This is becoming a theme for 2024 for me. Amazing, <sighs> for me, amazing first and second act. It had me intrigued, had me invested. Mm-hmm. Thought it was mm-hmm. really good. Mm-hmm. Then third act happened, and I said, fuck this movie. It and you said pee pee poo poo. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like it did the one taboo that pisses both you and I off. Uh, <laughs> one cl- horror cliche. And I was, uh, I checked out. I'm like, nope, done. Like, I don't even care now. This pissed me right off. You were like, movie suck my dick. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's what I said to it too. I, I, there was a plot point in this that was so 2020 it was so dated. Like I'm so tired of this plot point. And so many holes in the conclusion. And mm-hmm. and I, like, you will get more upset about plot holes. Erica gets very upset about plot holes because she's very much, like, logic and stuff. I can usually forgive plot holes. I'm usually like, ah, it's a fucking movie. Who gives yeah. a shit? Even I was like, get the fuck out of here. Like, even I was like, this makes zero sense. Like, beyond zero sense. What a disappointment. Yeah, because this, what a disappointment. if the third act would have landed for me, this would have been a good top 10 contender for me because I was loving every bit of it so far. So pro here, isolation horror, you don't, unreliable narrator, um, simple set, what you see is what you get at the opening. This chick's left alone to manage this motel and shenanigans happen as the night progresses, but things are not what they seem. And it's hotel horror. Sounds yeah. like a lot of other movies that use hotel horror, to be honest. I don't know. Yeah. and it's Such a disappointment. It's a shame. And uh, I will read one review because uh, okay. Tammy Taminator uh, from uh, Horror Through Her Eyes and a Horror Cast absolutely loved this film. It's her first five out of five for 2024. She says, this has everything, uh, well, first new release 2024 that I'm giving five stars to. This has everything, uh, ghosties, humor, the... Uh, of the good kind twist that actually got me and it ended with a smile on my face. There's hope for 2024 yet. She um, loved this movie. You know, and every podcaster's rightful to their own opinion. Oh yeah. Like I, um, I, I was talking to her about it and I told her, I'm like, yep, yeah, the reveal in the third act ruined it for me. And she goes, that's understandable. Yeah. I, I don't think the, I thought the humor was okay. I agree. The humor was okay. I think it's it's really soured on me because of, I don't know, because what they tried to fucking capitalize on, I'm just so fucking tired of. And mm-hmm. I just think it takes a certain stigma that already exists in society and just fucking alienates people more. And that's what I don't like. Like, I'm so yeah. fucking over it. Like, it's just, and that's not realistic to what happens. It's so not, I don't know. It just, it presents a stereotype that's a problem. So... But that's me on my own personal views of taking it. And Sense of a Movie is filmed well. It's made well. The acting's good. It's not a horrible film. I definitely could see people like Tammy enjoying it, right? And I don't mean like yeah. Tammy in a bad way. I mean, like, there's people out there that will just enjoy this movie for what it is, yeah. right? And that's absolutely fine. So it is available on Apple TV, Google Play, YouTube, um, Amazon. I don't know. All the renting streaming services that you can think of. <laughs> I have a hard time recommending this personally. I don't know, Scott, where, where do you stand? Um, I'd say go ahead and rent it. Cause I, like I say, I do think there is a mm. good movie here. The third act may piss you off like Heather and I, but, mm-hmm. but I, there's or a may lot not. of people. Yeah. I was gonna say, there's a lot of people that don't have a problem with this, that plot device. Yeah, absolutely. Right. You know, so I say it's worth a rental like to, cause I'm, you make your own decision, but I say it's worth a re- like, you know, everybody makes their own decision on it, but worth the rental at least. Because it's 100%. well made. That's a good way to phrase it. Um, have you seen this next one? I have not. Okay. The Woods Are Real. Isn't this funny? Matt Wood watched this movie. Oh, mm-hmm. actually, Matt Wood. I watched the trailer and I was like, I'm good. You were like, this is a hard pass. Yeah. What happens when you have to put your money where your mouth? What happens when you have to put your mouth where your money is? 
Joba and Quincy are a wealthy Brooklyn couple who value charity above all. So they say. Yeah. Uh, but when a friend returns from a country plymouth plimage, uh, pilgrimage, sorry, to challenge their bleeding hearts, they accept an invitation that will change their lives forever. Um, this is sitting at an 80 minute runtime. This movie um, is definitely going to be polarizing. This is very much a political film. This pretty much plays on the thought of philanthropy. I don't think I said that right. Uh, the concept of give, yes, yeah, the concept of giving and rich people giving, um, and why they're doing it. Mm -hmm. Right now, there's always no matter. I read a really interesting article once that was no matter how pure our intentions are, every act of giving is a little bit selfish because it makes us feel good. I donate to the local animal shelter. I feel good because the animals are being fed, right? Or I'm providing some support. Um, you, I don't know, you donate to some cause at work because you believe in it. You feel good because it's going to help somebody. There's some kind of selfish piece to it. Yeah. But this is exploring the higher levels of it with billionaires who give to charity um, and what exactly the purpose is of it. Are they really following through with what they say they're following through with? Are they really living everything as they say they, they could? I think this movie had an interesting message to it, and it was very layered. I felt like this movie probably would have been better as a drama than a horror, because I, I get the messaging was basically, are you truly practicing what you are? And no one can truly practice everything they are, right? right. Human beings are inherently selfish. So no matter how charitable you are, like I think of someone like Dolly Parton, who is quite charitable and does a lot of good with her millions and millions of dollars, there's still something she's getting from that. Exactly. There, right? And it's not to say that's a bad thing. It's just the reality. I find the horror that's sprinkled in in this is more like people getting hurt and creepy, creepy people being in it. And... You know, not survival of uh, being in the middle of the woods in the middle of nowhere, but this truly was a drama political film is okay. really what it was at the root of it, right? So I think if that's your thing, then this movie would be very interesting. If you want to expand on the concept of, you know, are these billionaires mm -hmm. authentic with their contributions and, you know, what would it look like? If some of them were put to the challenge, but not a saw trap, but something a little different, sure. Right. It's worth it. Good acting, all that stuff. Okay. If that's not your thing, skip this because you're going to find it boring as fuck. And I think the reviews here that are all two star, two and a half to reflect that, I probably would put this at a three. Even for me, I was like, all right, guys, I get it. <laughs> right. That's but you're not point. you're not telling me anything I don't already know. If we didn't have these billionaires giving to some organizations, there would be no function of these fucking organizations. So, you know what? If they feel warm and fuzzy and they get a tax write off, but somebody gets helped because at Saint at you know Saint Jude's in fucking the United States, for example, some kid gets treated for leukemia fucking all the better right like right. let's pick our battles so anyway it's available on apple tv google play voodoo youtube and amazon if what i said sounds appealing rent it if not you can skip it all right fair enough so yeah this definitely sounds like one that yeah it wouldn't, it wouldn't have been a movie for me to watch it yeah. it's not gonna win any awards nor is it gonna be in your top 10 yeah that's pretty much how i felt um so yeah, I will, I will talk about the next one because I know you definitely didn't watch this. <laughs> um, this is totally uh, Scotty will watch this movie. Uh, and that is Easter Bloody Easter. Uh, with a 103 minute runtime, a woman must protect her small town from the jackalope based on the mythical rabbit antelope creature of North American folklore. Okay, thanks synopsis. Like I didn't know what that is. Uh, and his army of devilish bunnies as they embark on a murder spree over the Easter weekend. And, well, because it was Easter weekend, there isn't a lot of Easter horror films out there. So I was like, ah, fuck it. I'll throw this on and see. I was like, I expect this to be dumb. And, yep, I was right. It was dumb. But uh, also kind of charming and silly in a fun way. Um, the bunnies in this are basically just animatronic puppets that just I love it. look low budget, but 
are quite entertaining. Um, the acting is dumb and over the top because they know what type of movie they're in, so they're playing that type of role. It is basically a we're making a we're trying to make a so bad it's good movie. It kind of hits that. Um, the issue I had with this is the runtime. It was an hour and 43 minutes long. This should have been 70, maybe 80 minutes. Like there was just too much filler and dragging things on to fill out a runtime that wasn't needed. Uh, even the ending took extra long, like with like after something happened, the ending happens. And then there's more stuff. And it's like, it almost felt like Lord of the Rings, Return of the King. All right, it's over. Oh, there's another ending. All right, now it's over. No, there's another. God, okay, you can stop now. <laughs> but like, I just oh. watched the trailer, and what you said definitely summed it up as I was watching that trailer. Yep, just silly, yeah. ridiculous. They knew what they had there. Yeah, um, totally. I ain't giving this a great score. It, like, it's a two and a half out of five for me. Like, it's... Right in the middle. It was fun, entertaining, just a little long in the tooth. Um, Don Anelli loves it. Uh, he gave it a four and a half out of five. Uh, Tim Walker gave it a two out of five. I'm trying to see if oh, there's a guy that did a huge long review. Oh, David Garrett gave it two and a half, but he had a very long review written, so I'm not going to read all of that. But, yeah, just silly. It was something I was like, I just want to throw this on. It's holiday themed. Why not? So, I had my fun with it. Uh, right now, it is available on Apple TV, Google Play, Vudu, Amazon, and YouTube. Uh, if you want to support indie horror, I say $1.99, $3.99 rental if you're into these types of movies. But if not, I wait. I'd say wait till like it gets Tubi released picks on it up. Tubi. Or, yeah, I, this this feels like a Tubi movie. <laughs> Honestly, it doesn't look that bad from no, watching the trailer. It looks entertaining. Yeah, I'll say it's entertaining. Like I say, the score right. only goes down because of the length. Totally. And like, at least they know the movie they were making. Like, you can watch that trailer and they know what they were doing, right? Like, this is yeah. low budget, silly, you know, goofy. They were fun. Yeah, they're having a good time. And like, what's not, nothing wrong with having a good time, is there, Scott? Not at all. <laughs> right. You know who didn't have a good time? Oh, boy. <laughs> the two people in this next film certainly didn't have a good time. Uh, what's the next film? Let me pull it up. Oh, you'll never oh, okay. find yep. me okay. yeah. on the shuddy. Um, while we wait for Late Night with the Devil to be dropped, which hopefully will be dropped soon. Yeah, I believe it's start. sometime next week or the week after. I know it's in April. All right. That's what I'm holding out for, baby. All right. You'll Never Find Me. Most recent Shudder release as of today, which is April 7th. Uh, Patrick, a strange and lonely resident, lives in a mobile home at the back of an isolated caravan park. After a violent thunderstorm erupts, a mysterious young woman appears at his door seeking shelter from the weather. The longer the night wears on, the more the young woman discovers about Patrick, the more difficult she finds it to leave. I don't know if that's exactly why she doesn't leave, but anyway. Um, soon she begins to question Patrick's intentions, well, Patrick begins to question his own grip on reality, and I start to question who's picking out movies at Shudder. So we're all <laughs> questioning lots of things at the end of this film. Um, I will say the acting in this film is is awesome. The two characters play off each other very well, very believable. It's creepy. It does a very good job of being creepy. The tension is very thick. Tension is very thick. Um, I'm, it's a 96 minute runtime. It doesn't overstay its welcome, you know, on paper and really an application. This movie wasn't bad. It just didn't do it for me in the third act. Yep. I was going to say, uh, this is a theme for 2024 for me. Solid freaking movies that start off with the first and second act being amazing. And then shits the bed, the third act for me. Yeah. Um, like, I, yeah, I don't think I, I disliked it as much as you did. So why don't you share what you really? I, well, I know without spoilers, what really yeah. bothered the third act? Um, well, the third act, from what I can remember, because this is one of the first movies I watched after we recorded, so I'm trying. Uh, okay. So all I remember is the third act pissed me right off. Like, well, it didn't piss me off as much as Night Shift, but it did just. Uh, it just felt jarring and confusing and just mm -hmm. weird out of nowhere. Like. I, and I kind felt like of this is the year the of unreliable, unreliable narrator, narrator, and I feel yeah. like that's what bothered you. Is maybe 
is that the narration of this was so out there when you got to the third act. You were like, oh, fuck's sakes. Yeah. This is what this is. Yeah. I think in that, like, I almost need to start writing down notes in my letterbox review just to remind myself with some of these because, yeah, this one, I think that was it. Yeah. I think it's the unreliable narrator aspect. Like, it's, I've been there, done that, but it's at the same time, it's like, you had something good and you did this. There was just an inclusion in this third act of the narration not being reliable. And we've seen that a lot this year, unreliable narrators. Um, and the twist of mental wellness, wellness, health being put into a lot of movies that constantly, I find that challenging. Mm-hmm. I think it's very hard to do that well to be honest um i do think that this was otherwise good dialogue well done i wish it had gone more of the way that the there was i don't know if it was this christmas but the one shutter release where the woman is at home and the family friend shows up and as they talk she realizes what he had done to her family and there's the dialogues just between the two of them. What he had oh. done to her daughter. When was this? I, was it Christmas this year or last year? It was one of the last movies that Shudder put out. And it was basically this woman home alone. A friend, a family friend stops by. And as huh. the night goes, you learn more and more. And there's never an unreliable narrator. She's consistent. But then you find out his intentions. Yeah, that sounds familiar, but I'm, like, drawing a blank at the same time. <laughs> I would have to pull up the, the shutter release. But, yeah. like, isolation in the middle of nowhere horror, again, very similar to what this is, showing up at someone's caravan in the middle of the day or middle of the big fucking rainstorm. I will say, again, the dialogue in this film was excellent. The back and forth between the two characters was very, very good. It just didn't deliver that punch, you know? Yeah. That's the thing. Though out of the Shutter releases, I will say it's the better one. Oh, um, definitely. So yeah, because I gave this. A, uh, I ended up giving this. I think it was a three out of five. Yep, three out of five. And I think this is going to be a theme for this year, Tammy, because uh, Tammy's a five out of five on this one too. <laughs> well, I'll be honest. Not that anyone ever has to justify their opinions to me, but oh. I can see this being a five out of five more than I could see the other one that we talked about being a five out of five. Um, simply because I think it's a better quality film. I just find it funny that the two movies that the third act did not work for me were her five out of five. Right. <laughs> well, and 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 a similar theme in both. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um. So, but I will say that this, I think, the acting chops and the writing in this film were were superior. Oh yeah. Um. And kept you guessing more. Like honestly, in the other one we're talking about, I kind of called the ending from the beginning. Um. Like it wasn't hard to kind of put it together as the time went on but this i i really wasn't sure what was happening so i'll give and like on like i mean that in a good way like i right. really didn't know what was happening so it is available on the shutter all the shutters as well as amc if you have shutter this may be something that you want to check out um unless you're matt wood because matt wood doesn't have shutter he doesn't need to he's watched everything <laughs> so um <laughs> Did you watch you you have the next one on here, don't you? Yes, I do. Uh so yeah, the next yeah. one the next one is The Camp Host. Uh it's a 94 or 95 minute runtime. Sadie, a young Native American van lifer and her husband Ed find their trip derailed when they spend the night in a campground overseen by a maniacal woman who brutal, brutally punishes campers that don't follow her rules. Uh this is uh I believe a to be original. And I think so too. Uh, this is definitely, in my opinion, up there is one of the better to be originals. There's one more that we'll be talking about that I think is better. But yeah, this one is basically like a kind of ridiculous slasher in the woods. Um, unfortunately, this seems to be another theme for 2024. I could not ex- uh, could not stand this main character. She was just so bitchy and just rude to everybody. And felt like she deserved everything type of attitude. So I was like, I don't care what happens to you at all. Like, you just piss me right off. Every single word that comes out of your mouth is rude. <laughs> but I uh, did enjoy the kooky camp host. And yes, how she was like, you gotta follow my rules. And went nuts and <laughs> like, 
start killing people. Like it had some pretty entertaining uh, moments to it. I'm trying to remember though. I'm thinking a lot of the kills, if I remember correctly, were off screen. Yes. Which kind of sucks, but like I would, this would have had more gore and everything. This would have been a higher score for me. Like so far, like all together, this was just a three out of five for me. It was easy watch. Yeah, this was an easy watch. It was a basic slasher. I agree. The main two protagonists were, I don't know, you were rooting for their three-legged dog more than you were relating for anybody else. Exactly. Um, I I thought it was entertaining. I thought there was some creepy, weird dialogue that was pulled in for no reason at times that I didn't quite get where the context was. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, for a 95-minute runtime, slashy, slashy, chasey, chasey, puppy, puppy, <laughs> puppy. you know... A dog's in it automatically. It's got, and it's a three fucking legged dog. It's true, right? It's a dog with a disability. So, and I and I, and I can relate to that now because I got one. Right? Yes, you have. Imagine if River was it. Oh my god, can you imagine? A one a three legged, legged one eyed puppers. Oh. Well, no, him and the three legged puppy, and they're like oh. best friends. Oh yeah. Oh, that's the movie we deserve. That's not the movie we got, but no, uh, no, it's not. I don't know. For Tubi original, it was fine. Like I yeah. thought it was entertaining. You know, I think if you're looking for some basic slasher, it's fun. It's a fun yeah. little one. There, there, there's a scene with an outhouse that kind of grossed me out a little bit. Um, oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> you know, so that was kind of yucky, but uh, which did its job. It was supposed to be yucky. So I don't know if you if you want to watch it, check it out. It's called The Camp Post on Tubi. It's free. Yep, exactly. And uh, like if you're yeah. Matt Wood and you're trying to catch up to me, then Matt, I guess uh, you could watch this. I hope it's okay though. Maybe you should check with your wife first and make sure it's not too scary for you. We don't want you having nightmares. And we want you having nightmares. Well, he has nightmares all the time. He's like oh. me. True. Yeah. <laughs> and it's coming, Matt. 20 fucking days, man. By the time you hear this, I'll either be in the UK or on my way to the UK. Oh, boy. I'm sorry, Matt. I'm like would. camp host. Run. Watch, watch. I'm like, Matt, watch this movie. I'm the fucking camp host. That's me. Run, Matt. <laughs> run. <laughs> Matt's like, I don't want to run. I'm just going to fucking go to the pub. Heather can find me there. <laughs> That's how this goes. Um, uh, anything you want to add about the camp host? No. It's it just a low budget, slashy, slashy, like you say, and it's just with unlikable characters. So, yeah, it was okay for what it was. It like better, one of the better tubies. But like I say, there is one more that we'll talk about. But we got to talk about the wonderful big budget films that have been coming out in, in the theaters. <laughs> so, you want to tackle the synopsis on this one? <laughs> yeah, so this, I don't know, Camp Host, the Camp Host was better than this movie. Um, Imaginary. Meet Chauncey. He's not imaginary, and he's not your friend. And yeah. this movie was not good. <laughs> Uh, when Jessica moves back into her childhood home with her family, her youngest stepdaughter, Alice, develops an eerie attachment to a stuffed bear named Chauncey she finds in the basement. <sighs> Alice starts playing games with Chauncey that begin playful, but become increasingly skin- sinister in the form of a scavenger hunt. As mm. Alice's behavior becomes more and more concerning, Jessica intervenes only to realize Chauncey uh, is much more. Uh, I thought you were getting ready to spoil something. Is much more than a stuffed toy, stuffed bear. Yeah, she okay, believed no. him to be. No, what, what's there to spoil? Well, we'll spoil that in the uh, when we do our spoiler. We'll, we'll try to do a spoiler if we can figure out the third act. That should be fun. Um, <sighs> between Scott and I, hopefully we can figure out what the fuck happened. Um, you know, Scott watched this movie first, and he's like, "Oh, and Eric and I didn't really like it." I'm like, "Oh, it can't be that bad." Uh, no, no, I, 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 I told you, yeah, this movie was terrible. It reminded me of Night Swim, but worse. Oh yeah, I said it couldn't be worse than Night Swim. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, I just said. wait. Oh, just wait." <laughs> and you were right. I didn't think it could be. <laughs> I didn't, oh. I didn't think I would, like, I don't, mm. so, okay, um, so, I, I guess the best review here is from Vic Grimes, Kid Satidious, yeah, like, it's, 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 right, <laughs> um, I, uh, like, why, why does Lionsgate keep getting involved in films like this? Well, why does Blumhouse, this is twice from Blumhouse right? now. This was a Lionsgate and Blumhouse baby, yeah, like, oh. and, and I feel like I could just make a horror movie about the films that Lion Gates and Blumhouse comes out with right now. Yeah, like, I, God, this, there were so many just, if you would have looked into this online or if you would have actually did your fucking research 
little issues in this movie that would have made this so much more believable for one. And then also just throw out the third act, make this a short film. It would have been, it would have been better. Yeah. It, it, like, yeah. It, oh, the writing and like the writing dialogue wise was so bad. The story was just ridiculous. I oh this is the worst movie I've seen this year and I've seen some low budget stuff. Oh uh, no, film. Scalper. I didn't watch that so. Yeah. So you know I I will say this I I enjoyed it more than you did up to the third act. I was able you know we'll get into this in spoilers. I was able to forgive the plot holes. Ah, the dialogue was questionable. The characters weren't affable. But I was like, ah, fuck, who cares? I can like, put up the, the creepiness and this. And then it got to the third act, and that's when it lost me. And we'll talk about that in spoilers. Yeah. Um, But it's a shame, because I was really looking forward to this film. Now I understand how Tim felt with Halloween ends. It, this it's is a how our heart breaks. This is a shit film. <laughs> it is. So if Scott and I haven't done the best job in the world of selling it to you, and you want to see for yourself, I think it's out of theaters now. It must be, because it's on for yeah, rent. Uh, yes, yes, it is uh, streaming or available to rent streaming-wise. I think that's uh, how it's available at the moment. So uh, Apple's Google, Voodoo, Amazon, Cineplex, if you live in Canada. I don't know. If you really want to watch this movie, go ahead. But it's a Blumhouse and Lionsgate baby. And it's 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 the worst of the two combined together. Like, it's, this isn't Blumhouse, like, Get Out, or even Truth or Dare. Truth or Dare looks like an Academy Award winning film. Yeah. Like and people was, shit on that one. Or yeah. what's the other one? Fantasy Island. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I had more fun with Fantasy Island than this piece of shit. Yes, because at least Fantasy Island, the third act made sense. Right. Right? You hearing me, Tim Davis? You hearing us? <laughs> I know he gave it three stars. That's okay. Hey, he enjoyed it. <clears throat> I was with it till the third well, act. Well, I was calling him out just because him and Luffy absolutely hated uh, Fantasy Island. Oh, Tim, you got to be real, man. <laughs> seriously Tim like that movie at least made sense like at least right? there, you could follow what was happening but I know and, Tim also watched this with his kids that may be why he liked it their reaction may have helped increase it a little bit for him yeah now that they have nightmares because he's a shitty parent now that makes more <laughs> sense I get it good job oh, I'm Tim I'm not going to call him a shitty parent no <laughs> well he's exposing his kids to shitty horror movies why didn't you show them something good like Solo oh that that's fair or Serbian <laughs> film <laughs> Come on, Tim. Martyrs. Now what the hell, Tim? Megan is missing. Give them a real lesson in what could happen. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, Tim. You're not a shitty parent. Tim is the furthest oh. from a shitty parent. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> No, I'm just surprised that he got his kids to watch this. He probably thought it would scare them, though. I bet you Jaleesa well, was what the fuck is this I, shit? I think his kids wanted to watch this. Oh, did they? Was, yeah. Were they scared? I don't know. He didn't say. This was before he watched it. Like, Because I, I was oh, okay. giving the warning to him and Rob Humphrey. Like, oh, oh my god, this movie is so bad. And Tim's going, uh-oh. And I'm getting ready to watch this with the kids because they wanted to see it. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I think it's kid horror friendly. I think the kids Oh, it is, yeah. Yeah. And his kids are fucking tough. They ain't pussies. I mean, they live with him, and he loves to scare them, so... <laughs> yeah, they're like, fucking, Dad, put on Insidious. Fuck this baby shit. Well, Dad, throw on Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. Like, where's the omen, Dad? <laughs> the Exorcist. <laughs> Tim's kids are tough. Oh, uh, so, yeah, we could jump on to what is definitely a much better movie, in my opinion. Oh, man, way better. Fuck. And this yeah, is... You wanna, yeah, you I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. do this. But, yeah, this one is another 2B original, and this is a definitely, I think, the best 2B so far. It's called Slay, a 99-minute runtime. After a booking mistake, four drag queens find themselves performing for a mostly unwelcoming crowd, but when vampires attack, the crowd looks to the queens to save the day. Uh, so, yeah, if you are a fan of just uh, the lovely foul mouth drag queens and just the way they talk and the way they act, uh, mixed in with a hole-in-the-wall biker bar type scenario and just the silliness that comes from that. And then you throw in vampires and make it a low-budget from dusk till dawn. You're going to have fun. This was 100%. fun. This was had some good gore. The characters were super enjoyable. Um, pretty freaking hilarious in several spots. Um, some corny characters as well. But uh, this was exactly, once again, a movie that knew what it was. 
and they just had fun with it. And I applaud them for that because this was I had a lot of fun with it as well. This has a 3.3 rating on Letterbox, and if this may not be in my contention for comedy of the year, I, I really thought this was funny. I I love how it knew what it was, and it didn't try to pretend to be anything else. I thought the practical effects were decent for what it was in terms mm-hmm. of this film. I thought the queens were fabulous. Um, I love that their first song was Wet Ass Pussy. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, that they performed to. I loved the like stereotypical bikers having the issue with the drag and the comments and you know i thought that it was and it handled some transphobia actually really well yeah. like there was some political messages in this film but they were handled in a way that was like well we don't all have to agree but we can just let each other live their lives exactly like at the end of it it wasn't like people all of a sudden were like go running out to drag shows who were not into drag shows but they weren't sitting there hating on people of the queer community and that's yeah. If we could all just get there, that would be right. Cool. You know, yeah. if we could all just let people live their lives and love who they want to love and dress how they want to dress and identify as they want to identify because it doesn't have anything to fucking do with you, um, then yeah, that'd be great. So I thought this film did that well. Yeah, you know I what I say, mean. It showed the, uh, it gave the message of acceptance, right? And like that, it doesn't have to affect you. I thought exactly. that was kind of like the thing that it's you could just. Like, there was one part, there was one line in this where the guy's like, I can't believe you have a drag show happening. And he's like, well, you don't need to stay. Exactly. You can leave. And that's so fucking 100% the thing. You know, I, I've i gone to some comedy nights where I find the comedian offensive. Right. But I sit through it and I put up with it because I'm like, oh, this isn't my kind of comedy. But you know what? It is. And if it really bothers me, I, I can leave. No one's right. forcing me to stay there. I don't I'm not going to make a scene and cause a big upstart because it's not a I don't think it does anything. Mm-hmm. Right. And it typically makes you look like you're the one with the problem instead of perhaps what they are saying is problematic, but there's a way to deal with it. Right. You know, you could write this the vendor or the people that own the venue and say, look, there was some issues with this or you could not buy their stuff or. You could tell your friends if they ask you about the show, you say, you know what? There were certain things I didn't really care for. I don't like that opinion. I just, this is why I think it's problematic and let them make up their fucking mind, whether they want to go support that comedian or not. And there was no, and I liked that in this film. I thought it was political without being overly political. It was just kind of like, what if we all just got along? Right. Just existed in the same space. We don't have to be best friends but got along. And I thought the vampire lores here were funny. Like, I think yeah. they explored the vampire lores and had comedy with it. I, I don't know. Good job, Tubi. This movie was fucking great. Hire more drag queens. They're way more entertaining. Have them in all the fucking horror movies for all I care. They're <laughs> right? way better. Like, these ladies were fucking fab. They were great. Yeah, they, they were. Like, I had right? a great... Like, like I say, I had a great time with this. It was... Right? Like, I, I think I gave it, like, a 7 out of 10, because, you know, it's not, like, the best movie, but it was a lot of fun. And that's the thing. This is a fun, easy-to-watch... It runs at a 99 minute runtime, probably a little longer than needed, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, for Tubi for a free watch, totally worth checking it out. It may, it will definitely be a contender for me for comedy of the year because I did think it was quite funny. I definitely chuckled at it and I, and I had a good time with it. Yep. I'll say if anything, at least uh, to be a good contender for Tubi original for the year for me. Totally. Absolutely. Good job, Tubi. It is available on Tubi and it's called Slay. Yes, Queen. <laughs> <laughs> and I all believe right. these next three are all you. So there's something very special. On the last episode, I talked about the Winter Witch and I talked about how they obviously played paid this one British actress a lot of money to be in a film. And then it was like really shitty and it had all these other low budget actors. I said, and I said, I use the example. It would be like if you had Barbara Crampton in a film and you had all these other shitty horror actors or like a shitty movie. Guess what happened, Scotty? That came to reality. And that movie is called Snow Valley. Oh boy. This stars Barbara Crampton and a bunch of fucking nobodies. Welcome to the thing I said in reality. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you here to save me? No, someone, no one could save us from this movie. A newly engaged couple ski weekend goes horribly awry when an unexpected guest arrives 
and the house dark supernatural forces begin to arise. This is a 75 minute torturous runtime. I hope Mrs. Crampton <laughs> made a lot of money off this movie. Um, basically, this co- engaged couple goes up to this cabin in the snow, and Barbara Crampton is the housekeeper? Question mark. Who is supposed to be away for the weekend, but comes back. Um, and there's a secret that the family keeps that has to do with her. Ooh. Matt Wood, you know, sometimes just takes the words right out of my mouth. Here's his stunning review of this film. Dog shit. <laughs> we waited throughout the whole film to experience the horror, yet nothing happened. No horror. Oh, no, Matt. The horror was we lost 75 minutes of our lives that we'll never get back. The characters are all hateable. This is true. <clears throat> the acting is low par. Even Babs Crampton was poor. What the fuck? The script was all a bit shitty. Story was shitty. That being said, it was well shot. It had some nice ideas. Just executed badly. Was it supposed to be funny? Question mark. Oh, boy. Um. Yes, yeah, so it definitely thought it was funny. It definitely thought it was funny. That's one of the worst kinds. Like, there's one scene, Scotty, where, like, this couple is there, and this guy shows up. And he offends the female of the couple and they have a fight at dinner and the guy goes upstairs and the woman, like her boyfriend's like, you need to go follow him so we can like make this. Oh, sorry. Her husband says you need to go follow him and and make this up to him so we can like all be friends still. So she goes up there. They're waiting, waiting. She doesn't come back. She ends up banging this guy. It was like a fucking porn. You know what I mean? Like, I felt like I'm like, I've seen this before on Pornhub. I've seen the same plot line. Like, it was just stupid. But you didn't see any of the sex. You just saw them post-sex. Under the blankets naked, you know, like, ah, my boob is. Uh, Like, it was just, yeah, I don't don't know what the fuck this shit is. Don't watch it. I don't know uh, know where to rent it. Don't rent this movie. I I think I watched the trailer for this one as well, and I was just like, I'm good. No, this is bad. Sorry that this was created. Barbara, I hope you made some good money off of this shit, because it fucking sucked. All right, next one. Prey, (laughs) 2024. (coughs) Sorry. Also about a lion. (laughs) In some country in Africa. What was the one with Idris Elba from like two years ago? Wasn't that Prey as well? Or sure something? was. With a lion. Yeah. With a with a crash. That was a Jeep crash. This was a plane crash. Uh... Um. Mm, okay. Let the hunt begin. Mm. A young couple is compelled to leave their Christian missionary station in the Kahari <laughs> Desert. <laughs> after being threatened with death by extreme extremist militant gang. After crashing their aircraft, calf, they must battle the beast, the man and the beast for their life. All right, here's a dealio. Emil Hirsch is in this movie. Um, fuck, he's a good actor. I've seen Emil Hirsch now in Warden and Weldon and in this movie, and he fucking looks different. Yeah, I was saying, and he was also in uh, Autopsy of Jane Doe, and like, he's great. He's a, yeah, he's a great actor. Like, so he's worth and Ryan, and Ryan Felipe's in this as well. Wow. Yeah, so like, and, and Mira Savari, Savari, really? yeah. Holy shit, okay. Yeah, she dies early. Oh, that's a spoiler. Fucking doesn't matter. She dies early, because no one's going to watch this movie. But um, basically, the movie is based upon Ryan Felipe's character and um, Emil Hirsch. Emil Hirsch oh. is the asshole pilot that crashes the plane, and Ryan Felipe is married to Marina Survey, who are like the Christian saviors. Oh, boy. Um, this is definitely a Christian film. Yeah, this is definitely a come to Jesus film. Um, I will say that this um, did a great job of respecting the animals because there was no animal cruelty in this film. Well, that's good. You don't see them except for stock footage. So that's good. Um, you, you know, they crash a plane and it's trying to survive. There's a mix of characters in this plane and they're trying to survive um, I don't know. It's survival horror. It's an 86 minute runtime. I enjoyed Ryan and Emil and their interactions with each other. I thought they did a good job. I think Emil Hirsch, if it wasn't for him, this movie would have sucked horribly. He carried majority of the film followed by Ryan. Um, the end. If you really like survival, crashy, crashy lion movies, and you can totally like disregard any logic and any kind of like thoughts on how this would work. <laughs> And you're okay with a come to Jesus Christianity film. Oh, yeah, this yeah. is a movie for you. It's available on Apple TV, Google Play, Voodoo, uh, YouTube, and Amazon. And it is called Pray. All right, final one. Jonah, 2024. He wasn't taken. He was awakened. After an alleged alien abduction of Margot's son, Jonah, 
Ozzy and Darren, journalists investigating supernatural cases, are determined to expose the truth. During their investigation, Ozzy grapples with his own haunted memories, leading to intense skepticism about Margot's story. This was actually a pretty decent film. Yeah. I th- I think it just stumbled a little bit, but there's a shell of a good film here. So Ozzy and Darren are actually quite likable. They're, Ozzy is the one that's kind of questioning. He reminded me a lot of you. He he suspects that there wasn't an abduction, that this is more of a case of abuse. Hmm. And it floats between, is this abuse or was there actually an abduction? Okay. I think if you go into this movie expecting it to be a hardcore alien film, you're going to be disappointed. You go into this movie unsure of what the purpose of the main character is, being Margot, and Ozzy and Darren's journey to try to figure it out, you will be entertained. It is high dialogue. The kid is actually a pretty good actor. Jonah does a really good job. The ranging here is from two stars to four and a half. And I think that's very fair because I think it depends what you go in here expecting. Do I think it's a five star movie? Absolutely not. But I don't think it's a piece of shit. I think it's very much something that relies heavy on dialogue. It relies heavy on what exactly is the situation here. And it kind of gives you a conclusion at the end. I think you should watch it. All right. Yeah. I will add this to the list then. Like, right. I think soon. it's interesting. And it's easy to walk and watch it work. You right. can follow along by just listening to, like, if you had to look away, you can follow along. Um, the dialogue is clear enough that you don't need to be staring at the screen the entire time. Okay. Cause yeah, I kept uh, scrolling past this one. I've been curious. I didn't watch the trailer yet for anything. So I just kept scrolling past that. I was like, I'll get to it at some point, And then I just never did. So glad to hear it's, you know, worth checking out. It is. I, and it's not going to be for everyone. Again, it's not going to be for everybody. And I'm not going to run around and say this is a fucking amazing movie and everyone needs to watch it. I just don't think it's a one star film, but for some people it may be. I I just think it's, I think the dialogue in it and I think Ozzy and Darren are quite interesting. I think them, especially the guy plays Ozzy, I liked his character a lot. I liked how analytical his character was and I found that quite refreshing. Okay, nice. Yeah. So that is it for our watches. I am at 50. (laughs) I am, let me pull it up real quick, uh, caught me off guard on that one. Sorry, I just sneezed. I had to mute my mic. Oh, here I am. Uh, Whole whopping 33. Wow. I've been very picky this time around. Man, this is not the Scotty we know and love. Well, I'm trying to at least do 10 a month. 10 a month. At least. So I'd at least have hopefully 120 by the end of the year. Well, that's good. 120 is yeah. good. Like, that's better than someone like Matt Wood. <laughs> Matt's like, oh, just you fucking wait, Heather. I'm at 52. Oh, it like, probably oh. is. It's probably yeah, but Matt, probably... by the time you hear this, I'm already at 70. <laughs> She's already at 100 by the time we release yeah. this. Let's be honest. I'm like, all I'm doing on the plane over is I'm, I'm like trying to fall asleep. I'm like, no, must, must watch movies. <laughs> like and, just, and I know Scott's going to be taking 20 years to release the episode, so there'll be about 100 movies I've watched. Yeah. And then uh, be caught up. Must meet, beat Matt. Must beat Matt. <laughs> That's me. Oh, so, I love it. Do you want to talk about your older watch? I can't believe you watched this one. I want you to talk about that first. All right, yeah. Uh, so uh, Erica actually threw this one on last night. Um, we were just chilling because uh, I don't think I talked it. Yeah, I think I told you about it, but uh, our puppy decided our uh, TV remote was a yummy treat earlier this week. So we had no uh, big screen TV, smart TV to use in our living room because uh, new technology, there's no such thing as buttons anymore. So you have to have a remote to do anything. So I had to order a remote, and the remote came in yesterday, and we tested it at work. So we're like, all right, let's throw on a movie. So she threw on Godzilla 2014, directed by Gareth Edwards. It's got a 123-minute runtime. The world ends. Godzilla begins. Um, This has always been one of those movies I've kind of just never watched because everyone kept talking about, oh, it's terrible, it's terrible. There's not much Godzilla at all. There's like maybe two minutes of Godzilla and the rest is the drama between the people and blah, 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 blah. Man, I don't know what the fuck these people were talking about. I had a great time with this. Um, Yeah, there was a lot of the human element, which, you know, a lot of these American Godzillas really fail at is the human element. Um, But the Mutos or whatever the bad guy is, and this one, it's a new bad guy that's not, as far as I know, in the Godzilla lore. 
um, I thought were creepy looking, uh, very, uh, almost very Cloverfield-ish in a way, the monster from that. Um, and yeah, like the monster stuff was great. And even some of the human stuff was not that bad. Like, I don't see what people were having an issue with this. I felt it was pretty entertaining. Oh, why are you liking things that people hate, Scott? I That's know, not right? what we do. I know. I'm disappointing everybody. I think I watched this. I thought I enjoyed it too. The chick it's a chick from uh Stranger Things in it. Oh uh, no, this one has uh, uh Elizabeth uh Elizabeth Olsen from the Olsen sisters. She's the one that's not the twin. She was oh, okay. Scarlet Witch from the Marvel movies. Oh, okay. Maybe I haven't seen this one then. Yeah, because this one is uh where they're talking about like, you know, they knew Godzilla existed back in nineteen fifty four because Hiroshima awoke it and uh but like they had not seen it since and then come to this timeline and they know he's out there but then yeah the mutos hatches and comes out and starts causing damage and it, yeah it was pretty good i enjoyed the shit out of it and you, nice. you, at the end of it i'm going yep godzilla just proves once again i am the king with the motherfucking monsters bow down to well, me bitch <laughs> and you know what if americans hadn't set off bombs we would be in this situation so again it's all america's fault exactly or you could think of it as, thank you, America. You gave us Godzilla. <laughs> you know, that's a good way to turn a frown upside down, America. Scott. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Because if um, it wasn't for the bombing of Hiroshima, the original 1954 Godzilla would not exist. So right. you're welcome, world. <laughs> you're welcome. We have America to thank for Godzilla. Thank yep. you, America, for everything you do. That sounds fucking um, terrible. <laughs> you know, speaking on how great America is... Um, have you heard of this documentary, Quiet on the Set? Oh, I've been hearing lots about this. I have not watched it yet, but ooh, I've been hearing some things. So, um, in Canada, it's available on Discovery Plus. I don't know if it's the th same thing in the States. Yeah, I'm not um, sure. I mean, I'll, look, uh, I'll look it up on Letterbox while you're talking. Sounds good. So, this is a movie about Dan Snyder. Uh, primarily, and some other um, predators that worked mm -hmm. at Nickelodeon. Uh, during the 2000s and uh, worked with people like, um, who was the one? Amanda Bynes, um, a couple other character, a couple other kid actors, and it really shows the dark side of children's television how some of the women on staff were treated. For example, two women were told they had to share a salary as writers. Oh, Jesus. And when they went to the Writers Guild and found out that actually wasn't allowed, one of them got fired and told they would never work for Nickelodeon again. Hmm. Uh, there was much sexual abuse that occurred of young women and young men that were abused repeatedly hmm. by a couple of people that worked there. Yeah. Long hours on the set, set, very inappropriate skits, like Adriana Grande trying to squeeze a potato looking like she's jerking it off. Oh, boy. Pulling water on herself looking like it's a cum shot, like very sexually driven stuff, right? Um, you know, and the reason why I included it, because I think it's important that you know, we, we watch a lot of horror movies with kids in it and mm. we like kids are in, in, in films. And I hope from the real horrors that occurred for some of these young people in Nickelodeon in the time that they were there, I, I hope that safeguards are now put in place that prevents those horrors from happening again. Yeah. You know, criminal reference checks, um, children not getting emails from people that work with them like that there should never be a case where an adult is emailing a 10 year old nope ever mm -mm. not a pro like i would never email connor or um jaden there's no reason right. for me to do that um now if let's say connor wanted to go to university one day in the university of guelph and he's 18 or 17 i would be emailing him but ccing either erica or scott probably erica and scott yep. on that email be like oh hey connor here's the information we talked about let me know if you have any questions about these academic programs if connor was for some reason interested in going to canada for school right right makes sense but i would not be just emailing connor to be like hey buddy what's happening and like talking like friends right there's no reason why an adult should be friends like that with a child no not like there's no nope, never appropriate 
never okay. Um, again, I guess you could say, you know, Connor has a friend over and Erica is friends with all of Connor's friends on Facebook and Connor's friend messages her about something that's going on at home because she's a safe adult to talk to. Different situation. Right. Right. Um, never ever should it be in a friendship fucking, there, there, you do not have a friend with you. And, and one of the scary things is this one young person was being abused for a long time. And he was over at his girlfriend's place and there was a man that was trying to get in touch with him and calling the girlfriend's house. And I think he was 18 and the abuse had been going on for years. But at this point he was 18. The girlfriend's mother pulled him into a room and said, what's going on? Because there's no reason that a 45 year old man is calling an 18 year old kid that much. Right. Like that doesn't make sense. Right. And like as any adult, as you and I are, if we saw that, we'd be like, that doesn't make sense. Right. Like, why are you as an adult pursuing this person? So there's a lot of that fucked up shit. So it's a very heavy documentary. I think it's very interesting. And I and I hope that what we've learned from this is better rights for kids and not hiring predators. And what healthy relation? Like, I, I don't know. I, I, I can't believe we're in an era now where we have to have conversations, but maybe – we never had those conversations and that's how all that abuse continued. Mm-hmm. You know, people were never called out for well, that's also, actually not appropriate, right? Like that's well, so And also people in power have ways of keeping things hush hush. Absolutely, but you think of being things in like the Boy Scouts and other areas where we've had adults befriend kids, like it's grooming, right? Like mm-hmm. it's grooming. But it's just been like, oh, yeah, that's fine. Like, and especially for a lot of these kids, especially in, um, in the, in the um, television industry, it was a lot of these kids were like, I was getting my family out of fucking poverty. Right. Like, you know what I mean? So it was like, it was really, really fascinating. It's a heavy watch. Um, I think it will be hard for Erica with her having children, like not that the boys aren't yours, but her right. having biologically had the boys, I think it might be a heavier watch for her. But I would say it's a very well done documentary. And well, none I mean, of it, sadly, you'll walk away, Scott, and you'll be like, well, that wasn't a shock. Right. Like, that's, no. you know what I mean? And I was going to say, and she's into a lot of the true crime docs, and like, she's okay. fascinated by like the Jeffrey Epstein stuff. She watched all this okay. stuff. So I think she'd be able to handle it, because this is what I was going to suggest us watch at some point, because I was curious, because I've heard how just messed up it is. It's good. Like, it's well done. The thing is, it's well done. And, you know, the message is very simple. Like, we need to have safeguards. Right. Right. And like, we need to talk about how that's not appropriate. Like if you know an adult that's having a friendship with a 10 year old, that's inappropriate. Like there should be a conversation about that. Like that should not be normal. Right. right. So exactly. like calling it out, right. Is, is kind of what this comes down to, but yeah, you have some books you want to talk about. I'm excited for our little book club talk. Yeah. So as I talked about on the last episode, uh, I have gotten myself back into reading and just like in letterbox, I've got a good reads, uh, I got a Goodreads account, and I've been keeping track of what I've been reading there, and uh, like even created a 2024 reading list. Like, not trying to read 2024 releases per se, but just what I've read this year. And I, I've already read eight books since I started back up on this, but I'm also doing audio books, reading graphic novels, reading novels. Like, so it's easy reads, regular novel reads, audio books for when I'm driving back and forth to work and stuff like that. So I've been able to tackle a lot, but there are two that I actually recently just read, like physical books, that I found were very, very fascinating. Uh, the first one is called What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfish- T. Kingfisher. Uh, it is the, uh, if you want, look up the uh, name of the book and look at the cover art for this what moves the dead because it's very creepy looking but the art is really awesome um but this book is basically a remake of uh the haunting of hill house by edgar Allan poe it's like a complete retelling of that mixed nice. with uh last of us nice yeah it looks creepy and yeah it's like only 169 pages. Uh, the words are all spaced out, like like spaced mm-hmm. out on the page fairly. So it's a very easy, quick read. Um, only took me like four days on my breaks to read it, but nice. very fascinated because yeah, it is literally the a remake of *The Haunting of the Hill House* by Ground Poe, but just added her own twist with like that *Last of Us* like trioceps or whatever those funguses are that can zombify and like take over your body and stuff. That's what, and it was very good. Um, 
But the, my favorite book of the year so far is one that I've seen on this horror book group that I'm on on Facebook and then also was confirmed to be one of the better books that he's read in a while by our good friend Jerry Herring. And that is episode 13. Um, this was directed by Craig DeLuey. Okay. Uh, ep- episode 13 I found to be very unique because it is a found footage but in book form. Okay. So the story is about um, paranormal investigators going to a haunted house. Haunted house. And they are uh, reality TV show uh, paranormal investigators, not a YouTube channel. This one's like they have their own TV series. Okay. Okay. And uh, But I was like, I'm very curious on how this is going to work because how is found footage going to work in a book format? I was kind of curious yeah. about that. And, yeah, so... Uh, They start off with, like, found documents. So it's like, okay, so the main character's blog, talking about, like, leading up to the house that he found that he wants to go and investigate with his buddies. Oh, and here's, uh, they talk about how each character writes in their journal every night. So here's their actual journal entries for each night. And each character's journal entries and what their thoughts are on things going on. And then it actually gets to, like, the raw, uncut footage that, they actually started filming and like they talk about it in that third person's perspective. Like you're watching okay. a found footage. Very well done writing wise. Very really? smart. Yeah. Like it was, Okay. I was hooked from the very beginning and like the horror really didn't even start till page like 150. And it's like a 400 page book, but I was hooked from the beginning. Like I'm loving these characters. Like they are all interesting and fascinating. You're getting to know them. Like, hell, there's even a chapter where it's just the text message bubbles of a character and her sister texting back and forth. So it's just like, it's literally like just finding documents and everything else, and then the footage and going, here it all is, what happened? We're still trying to figure out the details. And as the story plays out, it goes in a bit of a different direction that I didn't expect and becomes, uh, I almost want to say love crafty in a way but it's not really lovecraft either um the closest description i've heard about for anybody that's read that are like big book nerds like uh like i'm becoming um connor has read this book called house of leaves and from what he has told me about this book this chunk of uh episode 13 kind of reminds me of what happens in house of leaves okay okay but it's very fascinating, very intriguing, very creepy at times. Um, but yeah, just this was an amazing book. And yep, I want to see if there's any other found footage horror books out there. And I also want to see what else this author has done because he, this was amazing. So I I like to download audiobooks and I prefer to listen to an audiobook on the plane. Yeah. Now, my audiobooks tend to be, and it's going to shock you, but social issue books. Oh, shocker. <laughs> I know. About ang like they all the things I'm angry about. So um I don't I don't do a lot of fiction. And but do you think I would enjoy this? I think you would. Okay. Like, I think this is like because it's for one, just like that topic of paranormal investigators. I, yes. Like, it's that which I do love. And just the way it's like everything's laid out, it's a very cohesive like story. Like I could see you like playing the images in your head listening to the audio. Well, this would like be good on the trip to the UK. Yeah, I think it would. On a plane ride to the UK. I think so. <laughs> and I'm even ignoring the UK part. I I'm... know! <laughs> You're like, look, Heather, I'm talking about this fucking book. Do not steal my fucking moment. <laughs> but yeah, this I, I think you would like this. Okay. Like, I loved it. Feeling it. I'm feeling it. I like it. I'm digging it. Um... Yeah, I'm loving that you're bringing these books to the table. It's great. Yeah, I figured it'd be something new. I mean, like I say, Kate kind of inspired me with her book review podcast. So I'm like, yeah, why not? I, like Now that I'm back into reading, I'll bring up some that I've been reading about. Why not? In Kate, we trust. In Kate, exactly. we trust. Exactly. Oh, my God. Imaginary is still in the fucking theaters up here. Oh, oh Lord. Oh, my God. So, Imaginary. Spoiler review here. Um... Mm, my it made money here's the thing it, it was made for 10 to 12 million and it's made 36 million in the box office holy shit so yeah well you know it was marketed well 
So why don't we start off with your issues with this film and Erica's issues, and I'll get into mine. Okay. Um, so besides just the painful dialogue and just cheesy acting throughout all this, one of my biggest gripes was there, well, yeah, one of my biggest gripes, I guess you would say, logic-wise, when I'm saying, do your fucking research. So, we are jumping into spoilers, people, and I'm jumping, like, very, say, towards the end of the yes. second second half. Um, I would say that this is the little girl, a therapist comes over and starts talking to her because of the imaginary friend that she's seen, and just kind of, you know, trying to understand things, what's going on. Yep. And then the little girl starts speaking like this and talking like her imaginary friend, like in the voice that the imaginary friend has. Um, then the girl like starts screaming and runs out of the room, if I remember correctly, because imaginary friend said, I'm going to kill you because you don't want to be my friend anymore type deal. So stepmother runs down, goes in the room, like, you know, what's going on? Blah, 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 blah. And this is where it's like, do your fucking research. Because not only does the therapist go, oh, here, let me show you the video of our private conversation with your daughter that we just had, you know, completely throwing out the whole, uh, what is it, patient doctor confidentiality. Um, here, let me show you this. Oh, okay. And, and another video of another child. Yeah, and oh, and this kind of reminds me of another child from like last year that I did an interview with. Here, let me show you this video. Like, <laughs> oh, fuck off. You. This is like, I don't even, I'm not that smart. And I know that you cannot fucking do that. You, if, if you're going to do something like that, you could be like, okay, this could be a risk for my job, but I got to show you this because it's concerned. Some type of dialogue to make just wash that away to like just say okay this person's taking a risk doing this but you don't even do that you're like i'm gonna show you this because i don't (laughs) know i don't know how this all works in real life (laughs) and then let's not forget the whole oh new stepmother coming in oh we have teenage daughter who absolutely despises her And blames her for everything and starts acting out because, yes, that's how every stepmother, stepfather, slash stepchild situation is. <laughs> Absolutely. And really, her acting out isn't that bad. So what, she sneaks over a, a boy? Yeah. And, like, he pretends to drop E and... It's, yeah, another... This boy is all <laughs> over the fucking top, like, when he comes over. And he, she's like, yeah, let's watch a movie. And she's just chilling, wanting to meet a new friend. And he's in there, oh, oh, so bored. Oh, we oh, you got some booze? Let me go get some booze. You shouldn't do that. Oh, it'll be fine. Smash. Oh, oh. <laughs> Fuck this movie. I, uh, and, and what was Erica's issues? A lot of the same things that I had, and she just, she said it just didn't, the family did not feel like a family at all with the dialogue, and it just all felt wooden, the acting was awful for her, the story yeah. was ridiculous, like, and she was the one that was super excited about this movie, and she's like, this was a huge disappointment, and I'm saving all the issues, all the big issues, of the third act until we talk with you more. <laughs> so so leading up to the third act, I was definitely higher on it than Scott and Erica was. Yes, everything the two of them are saying is true. The the chemistry between the father, the stepmom, Alice, the young girl, the teenager Taylor was lacking to say the minimal. The creepy neighbor next door, uh, Gloria, oh, presents yeah. herself as some kind of protagonist because you find out later that Jessica, she was, Jessica was removed from her father's care because he was seen as an inadequate parent um, because she had befriended Chauncey uh, as a child. And I guess the relationship went bad because basically the whole concept of imaginary friends, according to Gloria, is a long based belief that children can see spirits and some spirits are good and some spirits are bad. 
and there's a for- a bond that forms between a spirit and a child. <laughs> and then if that bond is disrupted too early, then there's trauma for the spirit. But the spirit was getting the kids to do bad things in the form of a scavenger hunt that we talked about earlier. So the scavenger hunt starts off with like, find a flower and a jelly bean to cut do something yourself. that scares you, cut off your hair, cut your finger um, off, <laughs> cut your finger off, like just stupid shit, right? As a sacrifice to open the gateway to, to imagination uh, land, <laughs> to, to afraid of the dark Nickelodeon set that was forgotten uh, uh, from the 1990s. Uh, uh, before we go but, any further, before we go into this lovely world, we got to sing the South Park Imagination Land song. Imagination. <laughs> imagination. Imagination. Okay, I'm done now. <laughs> and and where the kid Sidious came from is that Jessica has to draw all around her room as she did as a kid to get Chauncey to come back for her because he takes Alice to the not- um, upside down, yeah. not the undead realm, not every other fucking realm we've seen in any other film. Um, you know, and I didn't quite get how where the bear came in and why no one else could see the bear. I guess the bear never existed. The bear was... The bear was... What is the stepmother's name? Oh, the stepmother's name. Sorry, I have it right here. Jessica. So the bear was uh, Chauncey. To Jessica, oh, okay. when she was a little girl. And so this whole entire movie plays out that you think Alice has a stuffed teddy bear that's the yes. imagination. But that, yeah, at that therapy session, you find out there is no stuffed bear. In fact, like Alice, I don't know what she sees, but you don't see anything sitting there. But no. whenever, but when Jessica's watching it and when she's wa- watching uh, Alice play with her imaginary friend, she sees a teddy bear that she thinks Jessica attached a personality to or the alice attached personality to. yeah that turns into a monster yeah, randomly turns, yeah it, it, um it, yeah so this was a really weird movie so up to this point i'm like you know what i can forgive the weird ass relationship between everybody i can forgive the over-the-top teenage boy shocked that he wasn't killed but hey right what can you do right i can forgive all of this i'm like ah oh, there's a cheesy scene where the little girls outside and you know jessica thinks she's in the bedroom and there's breathing under a sheet and she realizes it's it's the bear but then we later find out that the bear doesn't exist and jessica manages to stop alice before she shoves her hand on a rusty nail um with the dad that's fucked off on his music career that he's yeah. sure in the country doing. <laughs> and I was I was like, I'm buying this. Okay, I get it. There's spirits and, inve- and imaginary ch- friends. Okay, that's good. Ghosty, ghosty, creepy, creepy. I'm okay, I'm okay. Oh, she's got a color all around her bedroom now and pretend how it was when she was a kid. Okay, I'm, I'm cool with this. That's fine. But then it turned into a fucking Goosebumps episode or Afraid of the Dark. Oh. And that's when it lost it for me. So they go through this set that looks like a low rent Alice in Wonderland set. There is that whole Willy Wonka thing that happened in the States in the UK. I'm sorry, in the UK where like they had that Willy Wonka experience that really shit the bed. Yeah. I heard something about yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. That was where I think they got the inspiration from because this is what this looked like. It was like these poorly painted walls that they kind of tried to make you dizzy and these doors that would, you know, you could see the banging as you walked through the jiggling it literally looked like they pulled scenes from Are You Afraid of the Dark in 1991. Uh-huh. Like, I actually think they filmed it in Toronto. They went and found the set pieces. They blew the, the dust off of them, and they put it fucking up. Like, that's how I was like, what the fuck is happening here? And then, and then the neighbor decides. Oh, she goes, yeah, that she's evil now? Yeah, she just goes fucking bananas and is like unhinged psycho all of a sudden. Yeah. All of a sudden, all the help she's done, she's like, oh, no, I always wanted this. Now I can prove that the imaginary world exists. I'm going (laughs) to trap you in here with me so we can live here forever. Like, what the fuck is going on in this movie? Like, I... Like, and well, she got killed early on. She got pulled into one of the doors, which you don't really see what happened to her. But we were all thankful because no one needed to listen to her anymore. 
And uh, I'm, I'm wanting to look because I think this has, I'm going to guess a couple of screenwriters, not just one. Let me see. Ha! So. How many? I'm pulling it up right now. Writing credits. Da, 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 da. Yep, there are three writing credits. Jeff Wadlow, Greg Erb, and Jason Oramlin. Yes, this feels like three different people fucking had their hands in this story. Can you imagine if one of them wrote the first act, the second act, and the third act, and then they thought, let's just put it together? It almost feels like that. It really does. So, and then, like, so I guess Alice is in this world where her birth mother is not mentally ill, and she gets presents all the time. And she gets to sit in a pretty desk dress and have tea parties in imagination land or the upside down or the netherland or wherever it is. Or the are you afraid of the dark land or the goosebumps land. Are you afraid of the dark of the, like, this was such a moral, sometimes things are not what they seem fucking lesson. Yeah. So, and then, so they convince Alice that's not what she wants. But then Jessica has a fake out where she thinks she's out of imaginary land, but she's not. And her stepdaughter comes back to save her. Like, it's just, I I think what did it for me, honestly, was the poor setting. The stupid fucking third act that dragged out way longer than it had any business being. With the fake end names and the this and the that and... How do you stop the make-believe friend? And then they go to a hotel and they see a bear that's doing like also an imaginary friend. And it's just, it just got silly. I was honestly tolerating it until the third act. And then the and, third act, I was like, this is so silly. And I was saying like, I was tolerating it, but the entire time I'm going, oh dear God, just let this be done. Cause this is so generic. And then the third act happened and I went, are you fucking kidding me? And it just, like, it was already bad, and then it just got worse. I literally gave this one and a half stars. Like, this is the worst rated film I've had this year so far. I literally wanted to pull up our Afraid of the Dark episode and play at that scene, that third act of Imaginary, <laughs> side by side, so we could just compare on how it was the same fucking thing. Right. I just don't get it. I just, and, like, when you have such a big budget, those special effects were so rinkety-dink. Like, when yes. I when it, when it looks incomparable to a 90s TV show in Canada, yeah. in Canada. And compared, yeah, yeah. compared to some of the low-budget films we've already watched this year that look way better. Like, when <laughs> I watch a movie about drag queens at a bar and vampires show up, we're looking at a better film. Or, you know, with Here for Blood, with, uh, like, really low-budget acting and re- like, but special effects. Yeah. But, like, so much better than fucking imagination land bullshit. Yeah, I just, I don't know. It's a shame. I hope Blumhouse comes out with something else. Because, you know, with Blumhouse, you got hits and misses. I know not everybody liked Five Nights at Freddy's, but, like... Fuck, at least Five Nights at Freddy's was better than this. <laughs> yeah. Like it was a, a storyline you could follow. This was just out there, and I just don't... Anyway, hopefully... I don't know what else... What else are they coming out with this year? What's their next release? I honestly House don't know. Productions, let's see. Productions 2024. List of Blumhouse Productions. Uh, where are you, Blumhouse Productions? What's upcoming films? Speak No Evil. Great. Oh, yeah, because, yeah, it's the American remake of that film. Like, we needed that. Piece of shit. Um, Wolfman. Yeah. That's Megan 2.0. Yeah. And then The Black Phone 2. Right. So, yeah. um, I guess we'll see what happens with that. Yeah. I'm so excited. <laughs> well, you know what? At least we watched it. Nothing. Exactly. Gain. If you were a fan of Imaginary and the third act didn't bother you, glad you enjoyed it. Glad you had a good time. I just think it's you expect more from high-end production companies. But, you know, I expect a lot of things that I don't get in life. So I should, I guess I should just add this to the list of disappointments. <laughs> right. I, I feel you on right. that one. Uh, so, but, yeah, that movie. Uh. Well, good news is that Blumhouse will not be cursing us again until September. So we yeah. hopefully we have other things to look forward to. Like late, was it late night with the devil or talk? Yes, yeah, late night with right? the devil. Like that one's already been in theaters and then coming to Shutter sometime this month. So 
looking forward to that one because I've been hearing great things. Then uh, Immaculate, that's another good one I've been hearing great things about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's some good stuff that's out there. And again, if you only watch five movies, don't tell me this year sucks. Um, yeah. So if you're Matt Wood and you've watched five <laughs> movies, I know Matt's watched much more than that. He's watched ten. So <laughs> I'm just kidding, Matt. I'm sure you watched like probably he's probably watched less. What should I look him up and see? Yeah, Mr. I mean, Mr. Big he, Dick Swinging. Let's see what well, he has to say he, here. He did tell you you should be looking at his letterbox. Oh, well, I'm looking at all of him. Where is he? There he is. There's that silly UK C word. Let's see where his lists are. All right, Matt Wood. Let's see. Oh, can't help but notice your 2024 list isn't here. Hmm. Uh oh. Right. You know what? He hasn't watched that many. This list, like his lists are like 98 films, 10 films, 34 films. <laughs> oh wow, Matt. Wow. Want to hear what my list is? In 2021 alone, for first time watches of new movies, I watched 208 films. In 2020, I watched 256 first time watches and 230 2020 films. Suck my D, Matt. Coming at me. Matt's like, I just don't have them on my letterbox. <laughs> Which he could uh, not, in all fairness. It's not like I got Halloweens and shit on here, because it's true. You know, we've all watched those a million times over. So his his letterbox could just be a taste of what the real wood's all about. You know what I'm saying? Ah, good old Matt Wood. <laughs> I know. I Look, you're rubbing this. your face. You're like, I'm so tired. Stop making bad horror movies, and Heather, stop fighting with Matt. I just want everyone to get along. I just want 2024 to be good-filled movies and hey. good-filled friends not hating each other. Oh, Matt and I don't <laughs> that, that. That's all, like, mom and dad are fighting again. No. <laughs> Matt and I will never get divorced when you have a bond this deep. Right? <laughs> but, like, I agree with him on a lot of his reviews. His reviews are the best. Oh, and yeah. he's not wrong. And I think the one thing we should be thankful this year is that we don't have to watch a Scream film. True. Though I will say Scream 6 was actually pretty damn good, in my opinion. Yeah. So, I guess in comparison. Compared to what we've had in a while for the last couple of years. <laughs> right? Well, I guess we'll be back again in May. I don't it's know if we'll be, be back May. again. I don't know if we'll record again before then. It really does depend on... Um, how many watches whether, you get in yeah and if Scott can make time for me <laughs> uh, Heather I will at least always try to make time for you that's not true that's not true that's I like, will try I said I'll try well we got really we're April 7th and next weekend we're not going to have enough movies to watch no. and then the following weekend would be the only other time so if we have enough and then I'm on the plane on Saturday I guess I could podcast from the airport that was what a professional serious podcaster would do you right you should be podcasting from the plane right on the plane live I'm on like, scene <laughs> on live on scene like I actually I'm gonna go to Matt's house and we're gonna podcast all three of yes. us together <laughs> Right, Matt's wife's like, "Who's this bitch?" He's like, "Oh, don't mind her. She's she's special. She's, she's part special. of a she's volunteer Canadian. program. It's like you bring in this Canadian that doesn't know anything, and you just let her experience UK culture. I'm like, exactly. what's thinking? <laughs> we gotta go get some chips, Matt. Want to have a pint? Right. What about these crisps? Are these crisps any good? Anyway, <laughs> so I don't know if we'll be back again before the end of May, and hopefully by then we'll just have forty billion movies to talk about. Yeah, we will We will try to get another recording in beforehand. But like I say, that will mainly depend on if we can even get enough movies. We shall uh, see. We will do our best, though. So yeah. as, as we have said before, we are proud men members of the Legion Podcast Network. Um, you can find us and a bunch of other shows on that network as well. Uh, they also have a Patreon. So if you want to support a variety of horror shows or podcasts, you are more than welcome to. And if you haven't join legion patreon yet what 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 are you waiting for what are you waiting for what are you waiting for maybe they're stuck oh, in imagination land us. get the fuck out of imagination <laughs> imagination <laughs> 
But yes, uh, join us. I don't think Matt watched Imaginary yet. Oh, oh I can't man. wait for his review. <laughs> his review will be the best. We'll have to read that. Just go back to it. Oh, Baghead. Sandra Kane seen Baghead. That's one I want to see. Yeah, I'm curious about that one. That's going to come on Shudder. Uh-huh. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's pretty good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so until next time, thanks for supporting us. Please check out all of our friends. Follow them on Letterboxd. Matt Wood, Tim Davis, uh, Sandra Kane, uh, Jason Gray, who I now follow on Letterboxd. Thank you very much, Jason, for sending me your contacts. Uh, I am following you. Um, who else do we follow on Letterbox? I guess those are the main ones we read like out all Mark the time. Mark Nato and Mark Nato. Um, well, Tammy. Uh, Tim Walker, Tammy Terminator Terminator. Uh, Rob, Rob the sexy Humphreys. Oh, Rob the Hump. And Rob uh, the hump. seeing all of his five star reviews for Final Destination and Lisa Frankenstein. Oh, yeah. and- <laughs> all the good stuff um, you know and then also if there are any of you that are on goodreads feel free to send me a friend request i believe i am just bail Hahn or scott crawford something like that i'm not sure but get yeah, see if you can search me up if not message me and we'll try to figure it out that's awesome yeah join scott on goodreads he reads now he's a reader i am he reads good. A, i read good i i, I graduated the reading to the fourth grade level I'm Maybe great. you could write Imaginary 2. I hope they don't make a sequel. Fuck my oh, life. Do you God. think they'll make one? I don't know. I doubt. I, I, I hope not. I really hope not. No. This one's right. like a staff, a stuff elephant or something like that that unless, they have. Unless they just take it and really do the Imaginary. <laughs> and they just roll with the ridiculousness of it. Maybe. But yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it could get worse. Like, they would have to try to make it worse, right? Yeah, they would really have to try. And I think they could do it. I have faith in them doing that. <laughs> well, hopefully I won't be filming Martyrs or... Uh, what's that one with the chainsaw? Full something, right? The, the crazy chick with the chainsaw, the French film. Oh, uh, High Tension or Hot tension. High Tension. Yeah, hopefully I don't make that when I'm in Paris. I'll be going to the catacombs. That's right. That. You're, yeah. Right? And, and there's... Sorry, in the river? No, oh, yes. Andrew, I'll, be... I'll say, and remember, when you are in France, France you've got to walk around going, ho, 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 wee, 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 mademoiselle, back up, back up. <laughs> okay, okay. I actually have a little French celiac card, so I can give it to people so they don't try to poison me. Ha, nice. Yeah, so I can't say baguette, baguette, because that'd be very confusing. <laughs> right. And I will be checking out a horror theme cafe Ooh. in Gateshead, England, nice. called The Rested Ghoul. Nice. Yeah. So That's, I'm I'm not jealous at all. You no. Know. I'm sure when I go in and I tell them that I'm a premium podcaster and that I will promote their cafe on my podcast, they might give me a free coffee. Oh, absolutely. They'll be throwing you money. Oh, yes, absolutely. They're like, who? I'm like, oh perhaps I haven't heard of me. My name's Kate Pollock. <laughs> and they'd be like, Oh yes. They're like, that's so weird. You don't sound like Kate. I'm like, oh, I put that on for the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I Actually, I may I may try to meet up with Matt. What do you keep looking at? Hold on a second. Bye. Well, Scott's, Scott's getting messages from the great beyond. No, Scott, don't go to imagination. No, stay here, Scott. It's not uh, better there. What no. happened? Is everything okay? Yeah, River's new toy he, we got him today, he already killed it. <laughs> Good boy. Good oh, boy. Pup. Oh, puppy. Oh, puppers. I was saying I'm going to try to meet up with Matt. I'm going to try to yeah. take the two train down to see him. That would be awesome. Yeah. Then we'll then we'll podcast together. We'll make a new show. Either none of us, either one of us can edit. So that should be great. It will just be something we record at least. <laughs> It'd be a big piece of shit that Matt and I just making jokes the entire time. We'll make sure that we get drunk doing it too. I mean that that's how you gotta do it. Right. If you're with me, you know, he's showing him him shudder me like you haven't seen this movie. He's like, for fuck's sakes, Heather, I've seen Halloween. I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> oh yeah? Did you know he shot him six times? Huh? Did you <laughs> six know that? Times, Matt. <laughs> six did you, times. Did you know that premium podcaster call? <laughs> I'm a premium, premium you, podcaster. <laughs> How much would you pay me if I walked into the rest of Ghoul and told them I was a premium podcaster with a straight face? I would give you 50 American dollars. Oh, that's a lot of money. <laughs> Don't be throwing around stuff like that to a Canadian, Scott. Yeah. <laughs>
Oh man, <laughs> do I have to record it and prove it to you? Yes, absolutely. Oh. Well, that's fair. That's fair. I gotta see well, this proof. It's true, right? Well, thank you, everyone, as for always, for supporting us. We look forward to chatting with you soon, and hopefully more good movies to come. We shared a couple of good stuff today, but please listen to the fellow podcasts um, that we have shouted out many, many times. They are awesome. They are. Uh, they are all very premium podcasts, so much better than us. That's why I make fun of them because I know that I'm just a uh, lowly beneath them. Like I'm beneath Matt Wood all the you time. You wish. I'm beneath him all the time. You know what I'm saying? You wish. <laughs> anyway, do you have anything to say to the good people, Scotty? Um, until next time, everyone, don't go to imagination <laughs> land. Imagination <laughs> land. Imagination. Because <laughs> if you do, Mike, be a spoopy teddy bear <laughs> and might be in the kids upside down <laughs> but until next time unpleasant dreams <laughs> see ya cheerio <laughs> cheerio <laughs>